Welcome back. It's good to see you again. All right, today we're going to talk about lab 2. In today's class, you will learn about input and output. Unlike the previous class, you only do output to the LED. Today, we will have you read an input from a push button. Well, first of all, Today, we're going to use a new equipment. Uh, this one it is HEMEGA88, a new board and a new equipment that we will use for the rest of the class in this semester. Well, to begin with, Arduino itself or the AVR has uh, a total of 13 pins for digital input and has six pins for analog input. In today's session, we're gonna learn about digital input and output. Well, when I say digital, it means the value that you can read or the value that you will write to the pin can be either high or low. This board already has some pin assignment for you. So today, you're going to connect two equipment to the board. One is the input board. This one contains a bunch of buttons. And another one is the output board. This one contains a bunch of LEDs. We will connect the input board, which contains eight push buttons, to the port that has the job in number 8 to 13. And we will connect the output to, to the port to the digital port that has a digital pin number 0 to number 7. Then we will continue to do our programming after that. Uh, but before we start programming, there is something that you have to know. First of all, the Arduino 2 itself is designed for AT Mega 168, but in this experiment, this board is equipped with uh, uh, the AVR ADA. So we have to do some modification to our board configuration. You just have to put this code at the end of this file. This way the Arduino tools will know your board. But you don't have to do this. You can ask for the instructor in the class to help you doing this. And once you're done with your program and you decide that you want to upload your program to the Arduino board, well, this board is a little tricky because by default, the board will run the program that you, you upload to the board. But if you want to upload a new software to the board, you have to first switch the board into the bootloader mode. To do that, you have to click the reset, but reset button and then select the bootloader selection button, this one. Hold down both button and first release the reset button. If you do it right, you will see three things here. Let me show you again. Reset, bootloader, release the reset. You see three things here. And then release the bootloader button. Now you are ready to upload your software. Once you're done with the upload, just Click reset again to start your program. Previously, you have learned to use the pin mode function to specify the direction of pin. Today, we will use our pin as an input, but there are two modes for input. One is input, another one is input with pull up. Well, normally, if we connect a switch to our board, you may want to use input with pull up. If you want to understand the difference between standard input and the input with pull up, I suggest that you consult your lab sheet and learn more about the document that I provided for you. In today's lab, you have to do a bunch of input reading, so I introduced you the digital read function. Well, 
if you take a look at, at the description of the digital read function, you would see that the digital read function returns two values, either high or low. So if you want to hold the value, you need a variable to hold the value. For example, you might have to first declare an integer a and a equals to digital read 10 will remember the value of digital read pin number 10. In today's lab, you also have to detect a click. Well, a click means you press the button and hold it and then release it. So, if you just check the logic high or low, that's not click. The real click means you click, you press, and you hold and you release, that means you will observe a logic like from 1 to 0 when you first hold the button and once you release, you're going to see the 1 again. Make use of a loop to detect the click wisely. Here's an example of the wait kick click function that I provided for you. In this function, I first detect for a click by check for the logic low, then I Use a while loop to wait until the button is released. Well, let me show you the real demonstration of what we will do today. Maybe you got an idea about the lessons ahead of us. All right, first thing first, let's do some connection. This is your board. Here's the power supply. Okay. First, we have to connect the LED board with this cable and plug it into the digital input sorry the digital IO port this one yeah like this then another one the push button again plug it in to another side so once you've got it like right you should see something like this now, this is another cable, this one, the serial cable. The serial cable goes here. And the other end of your serial cable go to the serial port at the back of your computer. All right, now we are good to go. All right, before we get started, I just want to make sure that I first connect the correct board, the IT Mega 88. All right, and my serial port is properly configured. <clears throat> now let's get started. For the first exercise, we have to make the pin input zero or the digital eight and input and make the digital four and output. So I just use the pin mode, pin number eight, make it input with pull up. All right. Now, pin number four. I want it to be an output. <clears throat> now, in the main loop, I just want to read the input. And if the input is high, make sure that the output is high. And if the input is low, send the output to low. I can use a simple if structure if I want to. Like pin read from pin number eight. Right. And if the result is high, I say pin right for high. Else, sorry, uh, digital right, not pin right. Else, digital right for number four to be low. Now I just have to make sure that my board will operate in the <coughs> bootloader mode. So I press reset, bootloader, and release the reset. I saw three blinks, and now I just download it. Oops. Try again.
All right, now I'm good to go. Well, once finished, you would observe this. Here's the output board, here's the input board, and I assign the digital pin number A to this switch. So when I press the switch, you will see the light come up. When I release, the light get out. So, answer the question. What do you think? When I press, I will observe high or low, and low. It means the light is on or off. All right. Now let's move on to the question number two in your lab exercise. Uh, in this one, I just want you to practice a simple for loop function. So I just use for loop. The idea is that I want for input and for output at the same time. So I can do something like this. Okay. If i equals zero, if i is less than four, then i plus plus. This means I have I will do four iteration in this for loop. And it's not one pin, it's four pins. So I can always plus i here and make it work. Alright. Now the same thing. I can also use the same for loop structure with my code down here. But actually it is easier than that. If I didn't change anything, I can just do well digital write equal to digital read like this and take the if out if I didn't change any condition. Here. Make it plus sign so that it is full port full pin, sorry. All right. Or if you want to inverse the logic, you can always try this till for inverse. All right. All right. Now see if that is okay. Very fine. Good. Now make sure that my board operate in the bootloader mode and load. Well, as you may guess, here's the result for button as an in, as inputs. So when I press, I'm going to show the corresponding LED. For the last one, well, I only need pin 8 as an input and pin 4 for output. So I take the for loop out. All right. Now here's the tricky part. I have to detect a click. Well, there are several ways to do that. Uh, like I may use an if to de first detect a read, a low, a logic low from the bottom. So this basically it is traces. The bottom is traced. Now I want to make sure that the bottom is also released. So I can always use the while loop to wait until the button is released like this now here it is released then I can do whatever I want All right now we have to stay <coughs> you can try something like this like stay equal zero and if the state is equal to zero, I say I want my output to be high. Else, I want my output to be low. Alright, this is one way to do it. Or you can use my wait click function that I have provided for you earlier. So now I have the wait click function. I can just take my code here out and say, please call the wait click function that I just pro provided up here. All right, verify my code and again down upload
anyway, the code that I provide in the last example is not correct or it's not complete. You may have to do some modification to make it work. Anyway, I leave it to you. Think about it. It's not that difficult, okay? But if you got it right, this is what happens. When you press the button, click it, you will toggle the light. When you click it again, you will turn it on. Again, turn it off. Alright, I think that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed the show. Until then, have fun. See you next week. Bye.